Third the charm? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Our next speaker is Alvaro Sanchez. He has a very interesting topic, and hopefully you all will like it, because I know I do. <laughs> Go ahead. Right, Take the you. stage. Uh, good morning, Belgrade. How are you today? Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I'm glad to be here to talk to you about uh, Micronaut and GraalVM. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm coming from, from Madrid, um, as you can tell from my perfectly British accent. Um, I've been a developer since uh, 2001, mostly in the Java ecosystem. Um, I've been working on Micronaut since the beginning. Uh, those are the areas where I work the most. Uh, so I'm not a developer advocate, but I'm an um, um, engineer in the project. Uh, currently working at Oracle Labs, which is sponsoring the development of uh, not only Micronaut, but also other things like RALVM and uh, a new product that we will announce soon called Graal Cloud Native. Um, I, I told you that I've been like a um, core developer since, since um, at the beginning of the framework. We started in 2017, uh, but at the beginning, the, the framework wasn't called uh, like this. So we had uh, a different name, like a code name called uh, uh, Particle. But uh, I, we realized that Particle was already taken because there was you know, some other technology with that name. So we had to come with a new name. Uh, and we, we, you know, we ran a poll internally in the team to, to propose new ideas, and I came with one idea that didn't win. I don't know why, because it was genius. Uh, my proposal was to name the framework uh, Summer, because Summer is better than Spring. <laughs> no, 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 no. Forget about that. It's a bad joke. Spring is great, but Summer is better. Um, and from a personal level, I have two kids, so you can tell uh, I don't sleep much, but it's fun. So uh, there's two things you're going to learn uh, from this presentation, uh, but before we get to that, um, some uh, questions for, uh, for you guys. So how many of you have um, uh, used Micronaut? even for, for a test project or anything. OK. How many of you use Spring Boot? Yeah. So can you leave the room, please? <laughs> uh, how many of you use uh, um, uh, Quarkus? All right. Yeah, it's uh, more about the, uh, the statistics. So, so Spring is number one, Quarkus is uh, number two, Magnus is number three by the numbers, but uh, that's just um, statistics. Uh, so I'm presenting you like uh, something new uh, that you're in the right place to learn um, about this. Uh, and uh, feel free to catch me um, after this presentation if you have uh, like further questions or anything like that. So um, there's three ideas I would like you to get from this uh, presentation. Um, one is that Micronaut is a modern Java framework. Uh, we, we started to design this in 2017, uh, focusing on the, of the type of applications that were built uh, in that time, right? If you compare to other tra traditional Java frameworks, Java E, Jakarta E, Spring, um, whatever you name it, uh, they were all designed like 15, 20 years ago. Uh, with different kind of uh, deployment models and architectures, uh, and they've been trying to evolve. But we, we had the, um, the opportunity to, to start from scratch and to focus on microservices, serverless deployments, uh, Kubernetes, etc. The second thing is that Micronaut is a general purpose application framework. You can use to write any kind of application. So people typically use it to write uh, REST microservices. Uh, but you could use it for command line applications, um, message-driven um, systems where there's no even a server at all. So you could have like a Kafka consumer or a Kafka producer with no server. Uh, serverless function running in the cloud, um, you name it. And uh, the third idea is highly optimized. Uh, this is... Um, uh, you know, right baked into the design of the framework. Uh, so we leverage a Java facility called uh, Annotation Processing API, 
which is essentially a compiler hook that, uh, that we use to, to produce uh, the framework uh, infrastructure at compile time, so that at runtime everything is faster. And this is resulting in uh, less memory and uh, less resources, like the footprint is, is, is slower. So the way we do that is with something called uh, AOT, a health time uh, compilation. And uh, you can see other frameworks in the, in the Java ecosystem doing the same. Uh, but we, we were the first ones uh, leveraging this approach. So the idea is that if you think about Jakarta E or Spring, uh, where everything is done at runtime, so for example, Spring, when you have an uh, at or wired annotation on a, uh, on a method or a field or whatever, uh, Spring at runtime will essentially have to, uh, to generate a dynamic proxy uh, on the fly, which is uh, like, a, like a subclass of your class and will uh, do all the logic to do the dependency injection mechanism. Uh, we do it differently and we generate uh, a class uh, at compile time, right? So all the framework infrastructure is done at compile time. There's no reflection, no proxy generation, no dynamic class loading. We don't scan your class path at all. So everything uh, at the startup is much faster. And by much faster is like, uh, I don't know, three, four times faster than like a regular Java framework. Um, not to mention uh, with, with a, um, a native image, which I will talk to you about that later. Uh, and not only the startup time is faster, but also the memory consumption is much uh, slower, like uh, t uh, 10 times slower. Like I said, Micronet is a general purpose framework, so you can use it for with uh, three languages, Java, Kotlin, and Groovy are supported. Uh, we have tooling for Maven Gradle. We have testing uh, <coughs> support for JUnit and Spock. Uh, and also Kotlin uh, uh, code test, I think it's the name. Uh, there are integrations with you know the major clouds, uh, the major technologies. Um, so, like I said, this is a general purpose framework. You will find many integrations. So, think of Micronaut as the combination of um, Spring plus Spring Boot plus Spring Cloud plus Spring Security. Uh, like um, you know, the whole Spring ecosystem uh, could be compared to, to Micronaut. Uh, we started in 2017, as I told you, uh, and uh, we are now at version 3.7, and we're uh, planning to release uh, Micron 4 uh, next year with a Java 17 baseline. So today, Micron 3 supports uh, Java 8. Uh, is anybody here still using Java 8? Yeah, please leave the room as well. Um, uh, it's time to upgrade, so <laughs> think about it. <laughs> think about it. You, sh you should upgrade um, anytime soon. I'm kidding. Um, so good news is that if you want to use uh, Java 8, you will still be able to use Micro 3, right? So Micro 3 will still be supported. Uh, but if you want to, to try the new one, the, uh, the new version, Micro 4, uh, you'll have to upgrade. Uh, quick review of the um, features. So the core of the framework is the dependency injection framework uh, based on either G uh, JSR 330 annotations like add inject, add single tongue, etc. Or you can use uh, Spring annotations. And this brings an interesting topic because we have an extensive Spring support. Uh, the way that works is that we uh, we're able to translate 80% uh, more or less of the Spring annotations into Micronaut ones. So you can take 16 Spring application, uh, not change the code at all, leave, leave the code as, as it is. Of course, uh, if you're using like uh, all the supported annotations, right? And then simply add a, um, a Micronaut runtime dependency to your build, and uh, it will use uh, you know the Micronaut server to run your Spring application, right? Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, in terms of configuration, uh, well, there's multiple uh, formats uh, supported. Uh, there is uh, validation support. Um, there is a built-in validation uh, engine 
uh, based on the same idea as the dependency injection. So it's reflection free, it's uh, compile time, faster start up, uh, is way smaller than uh, Hibernate beam validation. But if you want like the full beam validation support, uh, you can still use uh, Hibernate validation. Uh, there's an IOP framework as well uh, that we use it internally to, to support, uh, for example, the, the SDP client and things like that. Uh, but you could use it for, for your own needs. Uh, this would be like the hello world. Uh, so Micronaut uses uh, an annotation programming model. Uh, so that's coming from a spring will feel like at home. Uh, the annotations are roughly the same. Um, so, um, uh, so yeah, this, that's a typical sample. The difference again is how each of the frameworks are treating those annotations, right? So we, we, uh, the necessary infrastructure to turn this into a bin and then uh, make a native server listening report, uh, receiving a request to that uh, URL and uh, accept uh, the request, et cetera. You know, all the framework infrastructure is uh, generated at compile time. There is also an, H an HTTP client. Uh, so as you can see, you have an interface uh, with a client annotation. Uh, uh, have you ever known about uh, Spring Cloud Fane, the declarative HTTP client? Yeah. So this is uh, roughly the same idea. Uh, but again, this is implemented at compile time. In terms of uh, messaging applications, there's like the major um, technology supported. Uh, for data access, we have something called Micronaut Data, uh, which you see, uh, it follows the repository pattern. Uh, so this is one example. Uh, again, this is an interface, so we will implement this interface at compile time. Um, and um, there's some good um, goodies uh, in Micronaut Data, like for example, um, if you define in your interface a method like this, uh, like find by name, blah, 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 uh, Micronaut Data will figure out what is the query that needs to be implemented based on the name. Uh, so it's find by, so it knows it's returning like, um, like a single, uh, sorry, it's, it's like, a, like a query. Uh, name is uh, is expected to be an attribute of of the user class, right? Uh, and then there is like uh, operators that can be used, like order by, etc. Um, and uh, there is another great thing about this, and it's that if, for example, uh, there's no there's no name attribute in the user class, you will get a compiler error. If you if you have a typo in in the method name, like uh, instead of name, you put something else, you get a compiler error. So it, it is compile time checked, which is uh, way better than, you know, finding uh, an error in uh, at runtime. Uh, and again, with this uh, attribute name, so so name is to be expected uh, an attribute of the user class. Uh, you can have a custom queries uh, if the originated ones are not enough. And there's even like a low level uh, Java API that you can use. Uh, in terms of security, uh, well, there's support for like the major things that you will need, uh, basic certificates, uh, was to uh, open ID connect, JWT, so we got you covered. Uh, and there's more. Uh, distributed tracing, uh, service discovery, distributed configuration, monitoring, uh, containers. There's, there's a cool thing in, in container support uh, and it's the support of test, con uh, test containers. But the support of test containers is not only that you can like, have test containers for, for testing, but also for development. So we, we call that uh, test resources. And the idea of test resources is that um, you imagine like the typical uh, application that has, uh, I don't know, uh, micro data with some database uh, logic, uh, like the one we saw before. Um, so based on based on the configuration file and based on the dependencies of your application, we will figure out that you want to use, um, that you want to use a, a database. So we will figure out which is the database container that you need for your application. Uh, so if you are using or build tooling for Maven or Gradle, uh, when you run the application, we will start the database container before 
your application starts and keep it running uh, all the time. So you can uh, stop your application and then restart it and the container will still be running. Uh, and it's the same thing for tests. So it's much smoother than like a direct uh, test containers uh, integration. And there's more like cache, email, etc. How can you get it started? Um, there's a website called uh, launch.micro.io where you can go and select the like application type, um, parameters, and and there's a few things that are useful, like for example, uh, features. So you can say, I want the uh, micro data with an Oracle database, uh, because Oracle is the best database in the world. Uh, you can tell I'm not biased. Um, and uh, I don't know, you can, uh, select, for example, the Graal VM integration as well. Uh, so you select the features, and based on that, we will uh, generate an application with the necessary dependencies and, and configuration entries uh, so that you can get started with that. Uh, you can div uh, that um, combination of features so that you know what you would need to apply to an existing project if you wanted to add those features. Uh, you can preview it if you don't want to download it, uh, push it to GitHub, uh, generate it locally, get a command line uh, command to run it uh, on the CLI. Uh, there is a CLI that you can download uh, and run uh, uh, locally if you prefer to work on a terminal. Um, but the, like the interface is um, like the, um, the, the, the result is going to be the same. There's also integration with IntelliJ IDEA. So you can use the new project wizard to, um, uh, to generate the micro framework. And what you see here is essentially a different front end for the same backend that we saw before uh, in micro launch. And uh, there's also integration uh, from Visual Studio Code. I have one demo that I will leave to the, to the end because uh, there's um, another topic I would like to cover. So fast or good? Am I going too fast? I hope not. Yep. So Gra GraalVM, how many of you are using GraalVM already? Okay. Um, how many of you know what GraalVM is? Yeah, that's um, what I expected. Uh, so where's GraalVM? Uh, most of the people think uh, of GraalVM as native image. Right, because it's what people most talk about, uh, but it's more than that. So, uh, so GraalVM, uh, first of all, is uh, an open JDK distribution. Uh, not only that, but also the GraalVM compiler will merge into open JDK um, soon, right? So this will, this should be available in, in other distributions as well in the, in the future. But uh, essentially it's an open JDK distribution. Um, and you can follow two routes um, with, uh, with GraalVM. You can take a Java application and then use it as a regular OpenJDK uh, with JIT mode, right? So you get uh, like uh, with any other Java application. Or you can use the native image component to produce a binary um, of your Java application. Uh, for those that don't know about how, uh, you know, how GraalVM works. It's essentially starting from the, from the main class and then traversing all your code to, to basically detect which is the, um, which is the application footprint. So, so how many classes are reachable, how many methods are reachable, uh, and it's producing a closed world um, version of your application, right? So, uh, and it does, that by producing machine code, so it's a native native binary. So you get, uh, in my case, I would get a Mac binary. Uh, if you run this on Linux, you will get a, a Linux binary. Uh, so it's uh, operating system dependent. Um, and the difference, so when this binary is produced, uh, the you know GraalVM can get rid of many of the things that are uh, existing on the JIT uh, <coughs> the JIT platform that are not needed for for IoT. Like most of the, the Java runtime is, is not did it. Uh, and this is resulting on a, on a binary which might be uh, relatively big in, in size. So we could be talking about, I don't know, 
Uh, imagine like a, like a magnet application because uh, if this were like a hello world it would be much smaller. So actually the, small, the smallest uh, graph VM application in a container takes uh, like a, a 1.5 uh, megabytes. But uh, like a regular magnet application would be, I don't know, 50, 40 megabytes uh, of a binary. But running that is insanely fast. Is uh, it can be as low as six milliseconds to start up, depending on what essentially the application is doing and the hardware. Uh, the memory consumption is, is lower as well because uh, uh, like a regular JIT Micronet application will consume um, uh, probably like a 100 uh, megabytes of heap when it's starting between 50 and 100, something like that. Uh, but with GraalVM, the, the memory footprint is much lower. So you can imagine this enables you to, to, to write and run Java applications where you, know, where you couldn't before, right? because of the constraints. Because, uh, for example, uh, serverless, uh, serverless uh, um, runtime, right? In serverless, like for example, AWS Lambda, um, the cold startup is really important. So, um, and uh, if you can get, if you can write a function which is packaged into Docker container uh, and then run that in a serverless environment, and your function, the cold startup is, you know, uh, 10 times less than a regular Java application, you're essentially paying 10 times, 10 times less. So you're, you're literally saving money with using uh, a Graal VM. And uh, there's no performance penalty for using Graalvm, and this is important, right? So, so think think of it because there's there's like a like a healthy competition between the um, the Java platform group and the Graalvm teams uh, because uh, you know the uh, the Java compiler is extremely smart, and the uh, the JIT compiler f uh, in a regular Java application is extremely uh, optimized, so it is an amazing piece of engineering that have been like um, been um, created uh, since uh, 20 years ago and optimized through all this time, and uh, it's really smart at producing at making your application uh, throughput uh, like really amazing. Uh, I'm talking about JIT mode, right? But the the Graal VM team has like. Um, like um, you know, similar similar um, research uh, levels, so they have their own um, uh, garbage collection uh, algorithms and their own you know, opt optimization to achieve a similar uh, performance. Uh, now, the the last thing uh, I would mention is the combination of Micronaut and GraalVM, because you can get GraalVM support. In Spring via Spring Native or Quarkus. Uh, Quarkus has uh, GraalVM support uh, since the beginning. Uh, but uh, the only framework where, where you will find the best uh, GraalVM integration is Micronaut because, um, uh, first of all, because uh, the, the two teams are working together. So the GraalVM team is a sibling team of the Micronaut team at Oracle Labs. Um, and uh, you can tell we work very closely with them. Uh, so the uh, the integration is smoother and better with with Micronaut. Uh, and this is also because reason number two, and is that um, Micronaut is ready for Graal VM since day one because of the design choices uh, I told you at the beginning. Um, so. Um, if you think about for a while about how GraalVM is essentially producing a, a native, native image binary, um, uh, for those frameworks that are using reflection or uh, are generating dynamic proxies on the fly or are uh, scanning the class path, it is problematic because a, a GraalVM is a closed uh, world version of the application, right? So you can't simply uh, load via uh, reflection a class at runtime in in a GraalVM application, unless you tell GraalVM beforehand, right? Uh, so this is so 
um, complicated that uh, it was simply impossible to to run a Spring application uh, on GraalVM until until recently, right? So so they've they've got uh, much better support with that, and and uh, there is actually a technology a Java agent built with with GraalVM, which essentially will detect those kind of things, so it will detect uh, reflection usage and will produce the configuration that, that you need to use to uh, to pass to the GraalVM compiler so that reflection works. Um, and uh, But we don't need any of that at Microt, right? So that's much, uh, much simpler. Um, and there's a reason number three, and is that the official GraalVM extension pack for Visual Studio Code is written uh, by the GraalVM tooling team and uh, they also brought the micro tools for Visual Studio, uh, so that's um, uh, that's also great. Um, and uh, there's the two ways you can get a native image with our build tooling. Uh, you can get a native image directly. So if I were to use a Maven package and specify a packaging of a native image type. Uh, I will get a local native image primary for my for my computer, or I could use Docker native, in which case we will um, we we'll have like a standard uh, Docker files that you can uh, customize, but uh, you can use your own um, by default, and uh, you will get a Linux Docker container with a native image inside, and then you can. You know, push this image to a registry and do whatever you want. So run it in Kubernetes or run it in EKS or, or, or Lambda or whatever you want. Uh, the question so far? Yes. Uh, so the, the disadvantages are like the compile times are noticeable. So let me show that. So I have here like a regular uh, uh, Micronaut Maven uh, application which I can show if this window were to work. Well, uh, so if I run this, so this is a Micronaut application using Micronaut data uh, with an H2 uh, database and Flyway doing migrations. Right to create the schema and insert some data, and all of that takes what half a second. Um, let me try again. Half a second, more or less. Uh, like 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 real naked uh, application with nothing else, like a hello world, uh, would take uh, I don't know 300 milliseconds or something like that. So, uh, database stuff is is taking like uh, 200 milliseconds. Uh, the native version is um, let me see run it again because if you link it you miss it <laughs> it's 37 milliseconds uh, now how do we get there so if I were to run package ah VM native image. There's two minutes left, but uh, we should have time. So this is uh, like a new M1 Mac. Um, so this is actually, you know, faster than the than the average. Um, so. So this is the uh, this is one of the disadvantages uh, that I see. Now you don't have to actually do this for development, if you know what I mean. So so the idea is that you can uh, you, you, th th there's nothing specific that you should consider for 
uh, um, for using RAL VM. So you use like a regular, you can use RAL VM JDK uh, during development, which is what I'm using now. Um, and then on CI, you know, before packaging for production, is where you like you run the native image uh, component. So uh, one minute, less than one minute. It's not too bad. And it is, this is not a hello world. So, uh, so this is what it takes to produce a native image binary. And uh, um, yep. I will publish the, the source code of the application, but this is not really interesting because this is a hello world um, application. Um, and uh, we have uh, one minute for more questions. Yes, so JIT will, uh, will actually do that, but the, the RAL VM runtime has its own optimization. So, so don't, don't ask me about uh, the internals because I don't know them. I'm not a compiler person. Uh, but they, they have like, um, they innovate through garbage, uh, garbage collection and uh, object handling and uh, things like that. So, so they have benchmarks and um, yeah, the bomb is about to explode, yeah. Um, yeah, we're all safe. Uh, so, did you have fun today? Yes? yes? Did you learn something new? Okay, thank you very much. You've been fantastic audience. <laughs>